All right, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for joining in. This is Rahul. I hope you guys are able to hear me and able to see my screen. All right, thanks. Thanks for confirming. So we're going to get started in two minutes. Uh, there are more people joining in. So uh, just wait for two minutes and then we'll start. All right, guys, uh, let's get started. So uh, yesterday we started with uh, the basic introduction on what exactly is uh, Selenium. We have seen that uh, Selenium is nothing like a tool that we can install on our machine. We don't get any setup file or a exe file. It's just a very basic configuration uh, that we need to do to get started with Selenium. So one of the prerequisites was uh, if you talk about pre-request, then uh, the very first pre-request is we need uh, Java on our machine. Java as in JDK 1.8, which is the most stable version and completely open source, no license required for it. And then we need an editor. Uh, we can download Eclipse or IntelliJ or any other editor that you would like to work on that supports Java. So uh, Eclipse is very popular and uh, uh, like 70 percent of the people are uh, using eclipse itself so we'll be using eclipse in the training itself and then uh, finally we, we would be needing the selenium jar as in the selenium api so selenium if we are working uh, on selenium with java selenium is available in a form of a jar file but let's say if you are coming from a different background if you have some knowledge of uh, c sharp and you want to use selenium with c sharp then Selenium comes in a form of a DLL file in case you work with this uh, C sharp. Same way, in case you are working with Ruby, then Selenium is available in a form of a gem file. So Selenium binaries are available in all these languages. So it, it depends uh, in case you use Java, you use jar file, you use uh, DLL for C sharp, gem for Ruby, different different bindings for different different languages available, right? So as we started uh, with Java, so we downloaded the Selenium jar from the main website of Selenium, that is uh, Selenium dot dev. So initial URL was Selenium HQ dot org, 
but they have now migrated to selenium.dev. So from here, uh, this is the download section from where you can download uh, the current version of Selenium that is 3.141.59. And then there is a whole big documentation as well available. I would recommend that you should try going through this website. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of uh, good examples over here to get started with uh, ID, web driver, grid. See, these are the only three components that are there in Selenium. There, there is no RC now. RC has gone long time back right and then uh, you can see some guidelines some worst practice uh, grid configuration a lot of things uh, like we, although we are going to cover all these things uh, in the live session so but yes uh, just for your reference you can try going through this particular website you can try going through the architecture the documentation part right to get some uh, additional knowledge on selenium project right so uh, in order to get started with Selenium, the very first thing that we did is we downloaded JDK. And after installing Java, Java as in when we install Java, it comes over here in C drive program files. And you're gonna see a folder of Java over here. So inside JDK, you're gonna see Java is inside this bin folder. This is where your Java is. Now, normally what happens is when we are working with Selenium, uh, there are a lot of integration that we do. So we have uh, listed out, uh, listed down some of the topics uh, yesterday, something like TestNG, Log4j, Jenkins, Maven. So these things might not gonna work on your machine till the time they won't find Java on your machine. So in order to uh, make Java visible, to all these utilities, we need to configure Java globally on our machine. Globally, as in there are something called as uh, setting up of system environment variables. So environment variables are something, uh, some global properties that when you right click on your uh, PC, go to this properties and then click on advanced system settings. And then you see uh, an option over here environment variables click on this now there are two things that you can see over here one is user variable and one is system variable you won't be doing anything inside the user variable system variable is what you'll be configuring it so the very first thing you're going to do is click on new and give a variable name over here any name you can uh, the standard name is java underscore home this is the standard name of the variable now this variable is actually going to hold the path, the root path of this JDK folder. So copy this path and paste it over here and click on okay. Once you click on okay, you're gonna see that a variable is created that is Java home, which is actually holding the path of JDK folder. Now, once you are done with this, you need to go down and search for this path variable. So edit this, you're gonna see a lot of things already configured over here. So these are some of your global settings. Now, whenever you are uh, installing Windows or different programs which are globally accessed on your machine, so all those settings are by default added over here. There are some settings that you need to manually add, like we are configuring Java. So we need to add those configuration over here in the global path variable. But you need to uh, make sure one thing that you should not do any modification or deletion to whatever that is previously configured. Otherwise, you can see there's a system 32 settings as well over here. If you may delete this, it may gonna uh, hamper your existing running system as well, may gonna corrupt your windows as well. So you need to be very careful. Just the only thing you need to do, click on new and type over here, percentage, Java underscore home percentage. So when you write this, whatever value that is there in Java home variable, this JDK path, this will actually gonna come over here. And now where is Java? Java is inside this bin folder. This is where the Java is. So what we need to do is after this, we're gonna say backslash and bin, that's it. This is the only thing that you need to do and 
your Java will be successfully configured. Like I've, I've already done it over here. So I'll not be redoing it. I'll just gonna delete it. Once you're done with this, click on OK, click on OK, click on OK, and your environment variables for Java is successfully configured. Right. So I got a question. Uh, what is the purpose of uh, this system environment vari variables? These are the global configuration. As I just mentioned that there are many other utilities that we are going to integrate with Selenium. So those utilities may not gonna work till the time Java is not there on your machine. And to tell those utilities where is Java, we need to put Java somewhere in the global configuration. So that is where, uh, that is where, uh, like in the environment variables, we create a variable name as Java home, and then we configure it in the path variable. So path variable is what your system exists. So this is the global variable, and here we keep Java home, right? Okay, another question from Ahmed. I have already downloaded Java 1.8 and Eclipse. Do I need to download again to the latest one? No, uh, Java should remain the same. And Eclipse, uh, I would recommend if, in case you are uh, starting from scratch, then download the latest version of Eclipse. There are old versions as well. You may have like Indigo, Galileo, uh, Galileo uh, Luna, N number of versions, Eclipse Oxygen is there, Eclipse Mars is there, but the latest one has got all the latest plugins. So I would recommend if you are starting from scratch, download the latest one. Okay, Ganesh, uh, your question is what happens when we set more than one version of Java in uh, path? See, we should avoid uh, doing this, otherwise uh, some of uh, the configuration may not gonna work. So uh, we should not have multiple JDK configured, right? Okay. So uh, are you planning for Mac? See, uh, Pramod, in case, uh, like I'll share you uh, the uh, batch configuration for uh, Mac uh, in case you get any issue with the Mac installation. Normally, most of the process downloading, installing Java and downloading uh, uh, Eclipse IDE, Selenium, all these process remain same as we are doing it on Windows. The only step change is for setting up of environment variables that I'm uh, gonna send it to you personally on your mail ID, just configure it in the same way. I already have added a video as well. So I'm gonna share that video for the configuration as well. And in case you get stuck, then I can take a remote of your machine and help you in that. 90% of the configuration remains same as we have in Windows. All right, so uh, other questions. I downloaded Selenium in machine where I can find that after download. See, when you download Selenium jar file, it will go into your download folder only. You just need that jar file and import into Eclipse. So I'm gonna show you those steps again. Without setting up the environment variables, see the programs will still gonna run. The basic core Java, as soon as you install Java without even configuring environment variables, you should be able to run your Selenium basic programs and the basic core Java programs. But when you later on integrate Maven, Jenkins, then those are the things might not gonna work if these uh, global settings are not there. Because in today's example, I'm gonna show you something related to Maven as well. Now, what is Maven? In some time, it will be very much clear to you. Configure in uh, system variables. So system environment variables are the same thing. There is the other section called as user variable. That is something else. Uh, we need not to do anything with it. All right, okay, so uh, we'll take uh, questions uh, later on. Let's gonna get start with our uh, topic first and see little configuration around Selenium. So what we did, uh, I'm gonna go back to Eclipse and I'm gonna create a new project. So yesterday we designed uh, a little API, a, sim a sample API calculator, and then we have seen how to use it. 
right i'm going to close these projects so i'll close it and create a new project where we're going to start with basic configuration of selenium so it will be a java project select java project from here and name it as selenium testing you could give any name and click on finish so now in this project we are going to create a new class because everything will be doing it inside a class so i'm going to create a new class give any name to this class uh, but the name should start from a capital letter let's say i'm going to name it as test browser and check this public static void main this is because all the execution will be done from this main method within this main method itself now here we need to get started with selenium now selenium is a third party api it's a third party project right selenium project contains a lot of classes a lot of interfaces a lot of functionalities right which is available in a form of a jar file when you're using it as a java project now what all classes are there what all methods are there in case you want to see the list of all these things you again need to go to selenium dev website go to download and just go little down over here you'll see the language bindings over here and here you're going to see the java language binding if you go towards right you'll see this api documentation so click on this and you can see this is a huge library so all the classes this is the collection of all classes and interface you're going to see inside the selenium jar file right so many classes each to automate every feasible functionality on a web you're going to find a class of functionality over here so let's say we we got started with one of the class called as chrome driver so in case you scroll little up over here you're going to see this class chrome driver so this is the class chrome driver there is something called as web driver now what web driver is if i go down you'll see something that is called as web driver so this is web driver and you can see it is written in italics italics means interface so this is something called as interface now what are interfaces uh people who have not yet uh, gone through the java uh, lectures so you'll be starting with java part from next weekend and uh, then all this what is interface what are objects all these things will be covered in java right this document is a little confusing uh, this is only when you don't have basic understanding of core java if you are good in core java you should be able to understand this document and uh, once you come to the selenium part once we start with the selenium sessions i'll be exploring this uh, java document only because this is the only guide for selenium there is nothing else there is no other uh, book or any reference guide that you need to refer for selenium this is the only documentation and it's very easy to navigate it just how you need to get started so if i'm talking about this web driver this is the first point of contact in this api documentation because yesterday if you remember we created uh, some code over here in this if i open this again and we started with uh, started by writing a little code on chrome driver right and then we called one of the method get so as i said this is the very first point of contact if you go down you're going to see a method summary over here and you can see these methods are very straightforward close closing the current window if you go down a method get see this is the method that we call driver dot get so it loads a new web page in the current browser provided the url in a string format that is double quote so we have provided the url over here that is how i'll be referencing this document right in some time it will be very much clear to you can we see the implementation of all classes inside the jar file in case you want to see this in the jar file i can show it to you uh, if you go over here if you expand it say this is the jar file that we have added if i expand this 
you're going to see all these packages. And if you want to search for web driver or Chrome driver, you'll find it over here. See, when you look for web driver, this is inside a package, ORG, OpenQA, Selenium. This is something called as a package. Packages are nothing, these are folders. So if, yeah, Ahmed, uh, that is something I'll be covering it soon. So uh, don't worry about it. If I show it to you in this uh, jar file, you can see all these things, these are packages. Packages are like containers, folders. So we're gonna search for a folder called as openqa, org.openqa.selenium. See, this is the folder. If you open this, you're gonna see so many classes. And if you go down, you're gonna see this web driver. This is what your web driver interface is. And all the methods, see, get, close, you're gonna find it over here. All these methods which are showing up in this method summary, close, find element, get, get current URL, you're gonna find it over here. So that is how you are able to access these methods inside your class with the help of this jar file, right? And in case you want to see what this method is doing, you should be referencing this uh, Java API document. Right, so in, in some time you, will be very much familiar with how you're gonna uh, handle this API document, how you will be calling methods from this API document. Right, once we start with it, I'll gonna explain you the entire process. Can you click one please? Uh, Latha, which one? Uh, I didn't get your question. You want me to click where? Eclipse, okay. Inside Eclipse where? The method. See, if I click on the method over here, it may not gonna show you any coding part right now. But yes, I can configure it in such a way that if you click on this method, you should be able to see the code of this method as well. So I'm gonna show you that example today itself. So just be with me for some time. I'll, I'll gonna show it to you. You should, you should be able to see the implementation of these classes, the actual coding that they have given. As I said, Selenium is an open source project. So open source means anyone can contribute into the development part as well. And for that purpose, they have shared their coding part as well. Whatever code that they have written, they're gonna, uh, uh, like they have already shared it with us. We can look at the implementation as well. Right. Okay, guys, uh, let's uh, just uh, start with the session because uh, I can see there are a lot of uh, questions and people are actually waiting for the session. So let's start and I'm gonna take uh, the questions later on. Okay, so uh, this is about the jar file and let me close this project again because I'm gonna show you how uh, we can get started uh, on this uh, new project. So from here, we need to call a class, whichever browser you want to automate, you need to create an object of that class. You want to work on Chrome, so you need to call Chrome driver, driver equal to new Chrome driver. So you need to create an object of that class. And right now, I am getting some errors over here. So why we are getting this error, if you take a mouse over here, if you mouse over on this, it says that Chrome driver cannot be resolved to a type. Now Eclipse is giving me suggestion, create a class Chrome driver. But Chrome driver class is already created. It's, it's there in the Selenium jar file. So why I'm not able to, uh, like you can say why I'm not able to take this class over here. Take as in there's something called as import. Why I'm not able to import this class. This class, as I said, it is inside some package. Package as in folder. Whenever you are calling a class, from a different package or a different container, the very first header statement in Java that you need to write is an import statement. If you look at this, the import statement was automatically written. If I again go back over here, uh, I'll open this project. You can see the import statement is already mentioned over here. For this Chrome driver, we were not getting error. This is because the import is already written over here. See import, org, open QA, selenium, chrome, and the chrome driver class. So this is the main package 
which holds this Chrome driver class. In case you want to see this package, you can go again, go back to the Java document and see this Chrome driver class is inside this package. Like in C, C++, you do include Konyo.h, Studio.h. In Java, you basically add import statements. So you need to add those packages over here, which the class belongs to. So this was working fine over here, but if I, let's say go over here, I am not able to import this. See, I was able to import this in the previous project. In the previous project, there was no issue. If I remove this, uh, import statement as well over here i'll gonna see the same error over here see the error chrome driver if i mouse over it says cannot be resolved to a type but you can see i'm getting some option over here import one of the thing is that i need to manually add i'll say import and the package is this i'll copy this package i'll paste it over here and say dot the chrome driver class I've imported, I've added the package and see now the errors are not coming. But how will I remember all these things? There is no need to remember it because as soon as you add this class, if you mouse over onto this, you'll get import option. You click on this and Eclipse will automatically gonna handle it. So you need not to manually remember all these things. Right, you need not to manually add them all the time. You just, Create an object of a class and Eclipse will automatically gonna give you suggestions. But this is with the banking project that we created yesterday. But why we are not getting it over here? I'm doing a mouse over, I'm not getting the Chrome option. I'm not getting any option for importing Chrome driver class, why? Because we have not added Chrome EXE? No, it has, it has nothing to do with Chrome EXE. It has to do with the Selenium jar file. This class is inside Selenium jar and we have not added any jar file yet. We have not added any jar file to this project. So because Chrome driver is a third party class, it is there in a third party project. So we first need to add that project in our Selenium project. So how we do that? We need to download the jar from here. So selenium.dev. I know, see guys, what I'm explaining could be a very basic topic for uh, some of you who might have worked a little bit on Selenium, right? But this could be a very new topic for the people who are uh, joining for the very first time, right? So I'm gonna uh, start from very basic ABC. I would request you to be patient, right? So uh, like uh, once we uh, cover a little bit uh, like, at least three, four topics on Selenium, then we'll be on the same pace, right? So if for the initial configuration, a lot of people uh, actually get challenges while doing this configuration. So I want to cover it very slowly. In case you want me to repeat it again, just uh, like type it in a chat box, or in case you want to talk to me, just type it in a chat box uh, so that I can unmute you and you can directly talk to me, right? So, I'll go to this downloads and download this one. So this is one single jar file. If you click on it, you can see it's downloading a jar file. I've already downloaded it. I'm not going to re-download it. I've kept it inside D drive jars. And this is the one single jar file that contains your entire Selenium project. So just copy this path and go back to Eclipse, right click on your project, go to build path. Now there are two options. At times you may not see this add external archives. If you see this, click on it and directly click on the jar, click on open and it gets added. But at times, if you won't see this uh, coming, external archives, then you'll see this configured build path coming. Click on this, then go to libraries, click on add external jar because it's an external jar file. Click on this, select your jar file and click on open. You're gonna see that it is added over here, then click on apply and close, that's it. Right? So dependency is something uh, different, Ricky. I'm gonna come to that part as well. So Wilfred, you're saying not audible. Guys, uh, 
are you able to hear me properly? All right. So must not be an issue at my end. Okay. Thanks for confirming, guys. All right. So once we have added the jar file, you can see still I'm getting error. I'm I'm not able to uh, like resolve this issue. Let's do a mouse over on Chrome driver now. Let's see. See, now we got this option, import Chrome driver. If I click on this, the class is added and all the errors are gone, right? Now, if I run this, what will happen? If I run this, what will happen? We'll open Chrome. Open the Chrome. Okay. So everyone is saying that it is going to open Chrome. And any more answers? If I run this, what will happen? Will it open Chrome or not? Siddharth is saying no. Manish is saying no. Now people are saying no. Why? You have to set the path. Okay, let, let, let's run it. Let's run it and see what happens. So as soon as I run it, I got some exception. So what is this exception? Let's read it out. So it says illegal state exception, the path to the driver executable. Now it is looking for some driver executable. So these driver executables are provided by browser vendor itself. Whichever browser you are using, the owner of that browser will gonna provide you an API, which will help you in building up a communication with this web driver API. The web driver cannot directly communicate with the Chrome browser. There is a mediator in between. There is an API that is shared by the browser vendor. So this web driver API is sending the request to that browser API. And that browser API is available in a form of some executable file, which we need to directly download it from the browser website. So if you go over here, if you go down in the download page itself, you're going to see third party drivers and platforms supported by Selenium, the browsers. If you open it, so these are all browsers that Selenium supports Firefox, i, Safari, Opera, Chrome. So right now we are doing it uh, on Chrome. So we'll go to documentation and you're going to see it is going to navigate to Google site itself. So this is the vendor website right in case you want to work on edge it will take you to the microsoft website and from there you need to download the executable and here you can see we have a chrome driver we have a lot of versions of chrome driver depends on which browser version you are using if i go over here go to settings and uh, go to about chrome i'm using 84.04 version so i need to choose this executable if i click on it i'm gonna get it for linux mac windows you just need to click on it and unzip it i've already downloaded it yesterday so it's there inside c drive executables i've kept it over here so this is what is required for chrome driver from the for the chrome browser right so now uh let's read the message again let's read that message what it is saying so driver executable must be set by web driver dot chrome dot driver so this is some property that you need to set using system property so system property is a java internal library the system is a java internal class what you need to do you need to write something that says system dot set property these are some global configuration for your web driver the, your browser executable so a word for windows 64 c uh, 32 bit there is only one 32 bit exe for chrome available that will work on 64 bit machine as well i am currently on 64 bit machine so i'm using the same 32 bit there is no 64 bit for chrome exe so now here you need to give this uh, property the key if you 
again look at the message that is web driver dot chrome dot driver so just copy this and paste it over here and then the value is the path to this executable file so path i can copy it from here and directly paste it so when you paste the path if the path is in backslash java change it eclipse automatically changes it to double backslash because in java single backslashes are not allowed there's something called as escape sequence if you write single backslash you're going to see some error showing up over here invalid escape sequence right what are escape sequence we're going to talk about it in the java session but for the time being for backslash it is double backslash otherwise you need to use single forward slash right so if i'm using backslash i'll be using double backslash and here i need to give the file name that is chrome driver dot txt so this is one way of doing it now i'll save it and run this now let's see if the error goes away see the browser is launched so this is a pre-request this is a pre-request for launching the chrome browser so yesterday how it opened when i've not provided this property see in case okay uh what are the prerequisites to start with selenium project the prerequisites we have already covered we have uh, downloaded jdk we have downloaded eclipse and then we have downloaded the selenium jar and now we have started with it right if the other prerequisites you are talking about that uh, you need to have core java understanding right so core java part we are not covering it right now and even we are not going in depth of programming we are not touching any that part that you might not able to understand it right so programming part we're going to start from the next weekend onwards today we are dealing with only the configuration part so in case you face any challenge today just try to understand the concept and then you can follow the java sessions and then again you'll be coming back to the selenium part once your java is over right so over here if i remove this thing i'll comment it out see this is how we comment in java just add double forward slash and it will comment the code right now if i run this it won't work it will throw the same exception the path to executable is missing the other way of configuring it just copy this file copy it go to your project right click and paste it to the root of your project so this is the second way of doing it now save this and run this and you can see again the browser is launched right lasa this is the same process we followed yesterday we have not provided system dot set property we copied this exe into the root project and that is how it worked right i i guess you have missed that part yesterday if i open this project you're going to see this uh, chrome exe over here this is what we copied yesterday as well right so this is the second way of doing it now there is one more way as well but for that we need to do some additional configuration and i would prefer to use that way only so what is that way i'm going to show it to you in some time right but for the time being let's just use this process so i use this web driver driver equal uh, priya i'll be coming to uh, this very soon what is web driver because web driver is another important stuff right but before that let's do some browser configuration and then i'll explain you what this web driver is right so most of you who may have started with selenium might have start, started like this web driver driver equal to new chrome driver and if i run this it is going to give you the same output but why this web driver is required if we can if you are doing the same stuff with chrome driver and it's working fine then why we need this web driver so we're going to come to this part as well very soon don't worry about it for the timing right the other way if i remove this i said you need to do a mouse over and then import it at times you write so many classes over here and you have not yet done with the imports 
so there is a shortcut there is a shortcut for importing control shift o and this will be added automatically so this is a shortcut to import all the packages control plus shift plus o right chrome driver driver equal to new chrome driver is just creating an object of that chrome driver class right this is a type as we discussed yesterday this is a type this is just a variable this is an assignment operator equal to this is a keyword a new keyword this is a constructor and this whole thing creates an object so this is what we have discussed when we created a basic program of calculator right in case uh, you are not familiar with what class is what object is just take these things as it is just try to write this down uh, in eclipse as it is and see if you are able to launch the browser or not because from the very next session we'll be starting with what are classes what are objects then these things will be more clear to you right uh vijay lakshmi uh, you want me to repeat once what you want me to repeat uh, like what i have mentioned for chrome driver driver equal to new chrome driver okay all right see this is type type like you have data types so this is a type of this class chrome driver chrome driver is basically a class we are creating an object of chrome driver class this is a syntax how to create an object you need to write you need to give a name to any object object is created whenever you say new chrome driver and you are assigning it a name this is a name this is a new keyword this is an operator equal to or you can say an assignment operator you are assigning this object to this variable this variable is of a type chrome driver like you write 100 this is a value you need to store this value into a variable you do value equal to this now this value must have some type so type is integer end or if you write string so type is string but the value should be in double quotes now if i talk about string the string is a class string class same way this chrome driver is a class right so this is what this syntax is so we'll, we're going to have a detailed discussion about this so don't worry about it okay so let's get started with by calling some methods and let's just see some more configuration around it so i'm going to say driver dot the very first see as soon as i do driver dot i get the list of all the methods which somewhere belongs to this class now one of the method i'll call is driver dot get because i want to do navigation so it accepts a url in a string format and here i'm going to give the url as http let's say google.com i'm going to save this and run this so now it will again going to launch the chrome browser and will navigate to google.com so this is how we just did it on a chrome browser right so now we want to do it for firefox now how to do it for firefox we just need to change the class say firefox driver driver equal to new firefox driver and now you need to import this class as well do control shift o and the class will be added that's it this is for firefox driver right so uh, Lata is asking how web driver type is able to create a new instance. Uh, okay, so web driver, uh, although it's the topic that we're gonna discuss it later on, but web driver is like a parent type, right? Any child can have a type of parent type, uh, like Chrome driver is a child class, web driver is something parent to it. Although web driver is not a class, but it's an interface. So we're gonna deal with this later on right i'm gonna come this uh with what web driver is what is the importance of web driver very soon 
right? Okay, so now let's run this and see if it launches Firefox. So it didn't launch. Let's see why it didn't launch. Again, it is saying path to driver executable must be set by web driver gecko driver. So see, every browser has their own executable file, their own API through which this web driver will gonna interact, right? So what we need to do again, either through system.set property, you can do it or just copy the exe of Firefox uh, provided by uh, Mozilla. That is, if you go back over here, you see Firefox, this is something called as Gecko driver. So go to the documentation part. And again, uh, you need to go to Gecko driver releases. Download this latest one, 0 0.26, and make sure you're using the latest Firefox browser only, right? Because Chrome gets updated automatically, but for Firefox, you need to update it manually at times. So update your Firefox to the latest one and download this 0 0.26.0. If you click on this, you'll find it uh, available for Linux, Mac, Windows 32 bit, Windows 64 bit is also there. So once you download it, I've already downloaded it. It is uh, over here. Uh, okay, I think I've removed it. So I'll again gonna do it for 64 bit gecko driver start download and here it is just copy this go back over here paste it extract it so this is the file i'll just copy this i can either give the path or paste the executable file whichever you are comfortable in you can use it like this so the file name is gecko driver i'll say gecko driver.exe just save this and run this and see if it works oh it's still not working why it is not working because the property we have given it over here is of chrome so we need to change it to gecko.driver so let's run it and see now it's launching Firefox and navigating to google.com, right? If Firefox not launch, see this is obvious, if it is not launched, then we'll definitely gonna get some error. It will not gonna work if it is not installed, right? So that's again a prerequisite. You need to have all the browsers installed where you're performing testing. Uh, see, in case uh, I recommended you to download the latest uh, browser, this is because uh, at times uh, we are, see, we are working in an open source industry. Even for the Selenium, let's say, this is a very good question. For Selenium, the current version is 3.141.59. Few months back, this version was 3.13. And few months prior to that, it was 3.12. There's a whole big summary uh, of the releases in case you want to see what all releases, how it goes. This is like the same development life cycle uh, in your organization as well, in case you are working with a product-based company or even with a project-based company. So everything starts from uh, the release 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, then 2.0, then 3.0. So if you go to this uh, downloads part, you're gonna see the change log over here. Uh, again, go over here and this is the change log. Here you're gonna see all these releases. So see latest one there, their developers are working on alpha 6, 4.0 release, right? Prior to this, you're gonna see 3.1 3.1. 3.141, 1, 3, right? So since 2.0, they are maintaining this thing. And what are these things? See, whatever they are adding it in the project, whenever they check in the release, they mention that what they have fixed. 
maybe uh, when you are working on uh, you're automating some website on selenium you might gonna uh, you might have uh, seen some issues in the selenium project itself so you'll go to selenium community you're gonna add uh, issue a uh, defect uh, along with all the steps that you have seen like you're gonna mention that there is a bug in selenium which has to be addressed then they're gonna fix that bug they might gonna add some new functionality as well. So whatever that they're working on, whenever they uh, come up with a new release, a new build, they actually gonna mention that these are the things that they have fixed in this release, in this version, and now they're changing from 2.10 to 2.11, then 2.12. Same way, when there is a major change in the technology, then it will gonna change from two to three, and now three to four. Right, so this is how they are maintaining it. So you can see every now and then, you're gonna see in the open source industry, every now and then the version will gonna keep on change. Uh, so as soon as the new functionalities are added, the bug fixes are done, right now it's three one, uh, right now it is four alpha, very soon you're gonna see four, then you're gonna see 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. This is the same thing happens with the browsers as well. So right now the Chrome browser version is 84. Prior to that, it was 83. Now let's say I'm using 83 version. I'm working on Selenium. Everything is working fine. All of a sudden, what happens? The browser is upgraded automatically to 84. Now, when I started running my Selenium code, I was uh, facing issues. The browser was not launching or even it was launching, but actions were not uh, performing. So at that point of time, I'll be, I'll be doing some troubleshooting. I'll see why this is not working. So I'm I may gonna check the browser version and I can see the browser version is changed. Now I'm gonna go to Selenium website to this Chrome driver and we're gonna check whether changing the version, they have the new executable available or not. So I'm gonna download the latest executable. So as soon as the browser updates, they update the executable file as well. So we need to download the latest executable and then we're gonna fix our project accordingly. So this is how open source industry it works. You need to keep on troubleshooting a lot because you're gonna face uh, these sort of issues every now and then. And you need to make sure that the code that you've written should work always. So we can automate this process as well. I'll be coming to that part of automation very soon, right? So that is why I recommend it whenever you're working on selenium make sure you have latest eclipse latest browser and latest selenium jar file as well maybe now you're using selenium 2 it might not going to support your latest firefox right so you need to make sure you use the latest selenium jar itself can we create the script that verify browser version as well we have something available for that thing as well i'm going to show it to you very soon maybe if you get some time i'll gonna show you how to automate these process today itself right okay so we'll we'll come back to these questions i mean after today's session these questions will be uh, all will be answered right suggestions you're not getting sahil for driver dot get are you able to uh, add this get method like you're not getting suggestions as in, if you say driver dot, you're not getting this list. If you're not getting this list, it means the Selenium jar is not successfully added to your project. So you can show that to me later on. Right, guys, I'll be creating a WhatsApp group uh, for uh, this new batch very soon. And then what all queries you have, you can even directly add it to the WhatsApp group along with the screenshot, the error message, the code you have written, and it's not that uh, at times it may happen that I'm not available, then you guys can also help each other. This will also help you in the learning process, right? So I'll be creating the group very soon. So let's get back to this. After Firefox, let's just try one more browser. So uh, let's try the Edge browser. So for Edge, it is Edge driver. Edge driver, driver equal to new edge driver. So for edge, it is web driver dot edge dot driver. And if I launch my edge browser, I'm gonna check uh, 
what is the current version of edge it is 84.052244 so i need to go over here uh, to the selenium website selenium.dev go to download look for the edge compatible version so edge is over here see it, it is going to take me to developer.microsoft.com and the version that i'm looking for is 84.522.44 this is what x64 is for 64 bit 86 for 32 bit so i need to click on this and it will going to give me the edge executable file i've already downloaded it so it is uh, over here if i go back uh, okay again i think i have downloaded it somewhere i downloaded it today itself the latest one so yeah this is the file msh driver so i'm just going to copy this and okay copy this path and paste it here and the file name is mse it's driver dot exe right and let's see if it works on edge as well so let's run this and now see it's opening the edge browser and navigating to google.com right so browser wise the configuration is almost done and uh see uh, which one you are going to use for this course see browser uh, i mean 80 percent of the people they work on chrome so most of the client are also using chrome right so we'll be using chrome as well as we'll be using firefox because these are the most frequently used browser rest you can perform testing on any any browser that you want right because see html remains same we are going to test the website so website is not uh built specific to any particular browser right the html when it is written it is not that it is only going to work on firefox it will not work for chrome right so the same code that we are going to write for chrome should work fine on firefox as well with very minimum changes right so we're going to see all these examples but for the time being uh System dot set property is uh, something that we need to look at. I even I don't want to write this again and again. I don't want this executable to be manually downloaded and kept it uh, to our project explorer again and again. Just give me a moment. Project explorer, project explorer. Yeah. So I don't want to keep this thing manually again and again. And there is something I'm adding jar file. See, right now we just started with Selenium yesterday i mentioned that selenium is just 25 percent in your entire automation project it's just 25 percent why 25 percent because if i start writing some more code let's say i gonna write a code which will gonna type something in google.com so as in i'll gonna say driver dot don't worry about the syntax what i'm writing now i'll be explaining this you uh, later on once we start with web driver lectures but for the time being, I'm going to write one line of code, which is going to write, hello, Selenium. Hello, Selenium in the browser, in google.com. Let's change this to Chrome. I'm going to start with Chrome because the execution is very fast in Chrome. So what this line is, don't worry about it for the timing. I'm going to explain it to you once we start with WebDriver. So see, it is going to navigate to Google and it has actually typed Hello Selenium, right? So now, if I talk about, this is something that I have actually input it to the text field. This is my test data, right? even if i'm navigating over here i don't want to write these values in my code normally where we actually manage test data this is just a single data but at times we are entering username password then we are filling up a form right we are adding uh, positive data negative data right 
where where actually we maintain this test data in our project where we actually keep this test data excel exactly right so we keep it in excel we can also read it from database but selenium will not going to help you uh, in any way in reading through excel file or reading through database because those are not part of selenium right selenium is only for web based testing but this is what our project requirement is i need to do reading and writing from excel i need to uh, fetch out the data and want to fill up a form on my website using that particular data that is stored in an excel file so for that we need to use an additional api like we have selenium api selenium jar file through which we can automate our websites we have poi api apache poi api which is uh, something if you remember we have listed it down over here this is poi api api is again a jar file so in case you want to do excel reading and writing then apache is one of the organization like uh, thoughtworks started with selenium similarly apache started with this poi api so they have created some api through which you can manipulate microsoft documents microsoft excel word powerpoint you can manage these things pro programmatically right they have built up a java project which is available in a form of a jar file so you need to go to their website you need to download this jar file the jar file something looks like this uh, if I go to some website and search for POI jars. So something like this. This is Apache Java API to access Microsoft format files. So I'll be downloading this jar file. I'll get this jar file. So it is downloading. And once it is downloaded, I'll again go back to Eclipse, right click on my project, go to build path, add external archives, go to download, and I'll add this jar file. Now I can do Excel reading writing as well. I'm gonna see so many classes inside this jar file, which I'll be calling over here. And I will build, I'll actually gonna build up a Excel uh, like integration with my Selenium project. And I'll read the data from Excel and add it over here. Instead of hard coding these values, these values will now gonna come from Excel. So that is what we'll be learning once we study about POI API. Same way, let's say I've written three lines of code, but it may happen when, when I automate my entire website, I end up writing somewhere around 5,000 lines of code. And the when I execute it, it will gonna take, uh, let's say at least uh, three to four hours uh, execution time. But for three to four hours, I'm not gonna sit in front of my laptop and we're gonna watch each and every action is successfully performed or not. Whether it has typed the username, password, first name, everything is accurately typed or not. But I want evidence of my test execution. For each and every line that is executed, I want it to be uh, recorded somewhere in a form of a logs, could be in a log file. So generating logs, again is not a task of selenium so we need to use an additional api for it which is called as a lock 4j api so this is another api another api available in a form of a jar file this is another jar file so in the same project you need to add the lock 4j jar now again you're gonna navigate to the website of lock 4j and you're gonna search it something like this log4j you get this jar file you download it so this is the jar file and then you go back to eclipse you right clicked on your project build path add external archives and add this log4j that's it so same way you will be adding all other jar files as well right so not just this maybe you don't want to read the data from excel you want to read it from database you want to do some database testing database testing as in you want to validate whatever the data that is showing up on the website is it the same data that is showing on uh, in the database 
So manually, how you do it? You write some SQL queries, select uh, uh, star from the table name, uh, where is uh, such and such value, or maybe you write some joins, but the end result is the data that should come from the database, and then you want to validate it from the website. So in order to make a communication with the database, Selenium will not gonna do anything in that, right? So all your vendors, vendors like SQL, MySQL, Oracle, they provide their own APIs. APIs are in the jar files in order to perform JDBC, ODBC connection. So we can integrate the database part as well. So this can also be done. So yesterday we discussed about Selenium is only for web-based testing, but we can do database testing as well. This database part can also be handled while integration with Selenium, right? You just need to add one jar file and make a Java JDBC connection. And then you should be able to write SQL queries within your Eclipse, get the data and validate it with your website, right? So if you look over here, when I executed this code, maybe there are uh, two, three test cases over here. So in, in manual testing, how we write test cases? We write something like verify user is able to navigate to the website, verify user is able to type it in the input box, right? So when I have written some test cases over here, at the end, what result should I get? When I execute it, it should actually show me out of two test cases, one is pass or one is fail, or both are pass or both are failed, right? This is what we expect from manual testing. And this is what we need to do with automation as well. If I'm running a code, which is going to execute for four hours, at the end, it should at least tell me that there were 100 test cases out of which 90 are pass and 10 are fail. And if they are failed, what are the reason for failures? So when I've executed it, is it showing anything how many are pass or how many are fail? Is it showing anything in this message? It is just executing it, right? We don't only need to execute the code. What is the outcome we're gonna get uh, by just executing the code? We should at least see how many test cases are pass and how many test cases are fail. So passing and failing the test case or converting this code into test cases or test suit, it is not a task of Selenium. Again, there is another API for it, another Java framework, which is specially designed for converting your code into test cases and test suit. Exactly, and that is what test engine is. So initially it was JUnit, developers are still using JUnit, but in automation, we use test engine because TestNG is very advanced as compared to JUnit. But both actually do, uh, both are doing the same job. Both are actually giving you the result as pass or fail of your test cases, converting your code into test cases. And this TestNG is nothing. This is again a collection of jars. Like Selenium, same way we have TestNG, right click, build path, add library, TestNG, next, finish, you will see test ng jars are added. Like we have Selenium jar, we have test ng jars. Again, it's a Java project, but you are integrating it with Selenium so that you can convert your code into test cases, test suit, and you can report pass or failure of your test cases. Right? Now you want, uh, let's say once the test execution is done, I want to let my developer or the test manager know how many test cases are passed, how many are failed. I want to send him in an automated email, right? I'll not be, uh, once the test is completed, I'll compile it, I'll create a mail, and then we're gonna type down everything that these many are passed, these many are failed. I don't want to do these things manually. I want everything should be automated. Once the tests are completed, the reports are generated, it should attach to an email and should be sent to my test lead, test manager, to the client. So that can be done with the help of another API called as Java Mail API. This is another jar file, right? So that's the purpose of Java Mail. Now Maven is not going to do that thing. 
right? So what Maven is, I've also listed down what Maven is. Now we are going to understand what Maven, Ant, Gradle, these all three are same thing. Previously used thing is Ant, Ant is very small now. So what majorly organizations are using is Maven. Gradle is uh, again, another version of Maven itself, right? So majorly companies are working on Maven. So we'll be using Maven itself, right? No, we cannot, uh, we can run the code with Jenkins, but again, we need some integration either with Maven or with test engines, right? What is Jenkins? Again, I'm gonna show it to you. After Maven, we're gonna discuss about Jenkins, right? So Maven is basically a build tool. Maven is a build tool. Plus something called as dependency management tool. Now I'm gonna take up a scenario. Let, let's understand this scenario very carefully. So this is very, very important. Let's say we are working on one project of Selenium. So we, we have just seen how many jars we are using. We are using Selenium jar version 3.141.59. Then I added POI jar. This was version 4.1.2. Then I added, uh, let's say JDBC jar. This was version 8.7. Then I added uh, log 4J. This was version uh, 1.2.17, right? Now, same way I may end up adding more than 100 jar files, right? The, these versions are from their project, from the project that they have released in the market. Selenium has released Selenium 3, which is at the current build 1 for 1.59. Maybe it may happen that after this, another version may gonna come 3.15, then 3.16. POI may gonna increase their version to 3.2. JDBC changes to 9.1, right? It happens, it happens in the industry. And whenever there is a new version, you'll keep on upgrading your code, you'll keep on uh, upgrading your jar files as well. Because whenever a new jar file is there, there's a new functionality that comes with the jar file. And you may want to implement that functionality in your project, right? So you need to keep on updating these jars. But what happens, let's say we are using th these versions and the entire team in, in a team of automation, there are, let's say 10 other testers working on the same project, right? So whenever we are working in a develop in a development project as well, this is the same scenario you can relate with a development project as well. But since we are doing automation using Selenium, let's say uh, all these testers, this is tester A, this is tester B, then C and so on. So they are assigned with individual modules to automate. Let's say this tester A is automating a login window. Tester B is automating some registration form, right? So at the end, whatever code that they have written, everyone has to check in the code to a centralized repository. This is very important. Whenever you're working in a huge team, at the end, you need to merge the code and check into a centralized repository, which is called as, if it is a local repository to your organization only, then you, might have heard something about SVN, or if uh, these days, uh, now it is everything on cloud. So this is very popular, something called as GitHub, right? Where, and checking in the code is very popular. I mean, very, very, uh, not popular, very important. Important in the sense, it, it may happen that this tester A, he might leave the organization. If he leaves the organization, the code will not gonna go away with him. Next time someone else join uh, his uh, position, then he can take the fresh checkout of the code and he'll gonna get everything. Maybe tester B, his laptop crash. So the code will not gonna go away with the laptop. The code is already stored at the centralized repository. He can again get a new laptop and can check out the updated code. He'll again gonna get the same code. Right, so that is why this uh, centralized repository is very important at the time when you are writing code, at the end of the day, everyone has to check in the code. 
So this is about the code checking process. But what happens in the code, you are writing code based on these jar files. So everyone in the team is using the same set of jar files. So at the end, everyone has checked in the code. But while checking the code, we are not checking in the jar files. We never check in the jar files. We never check in the jar file. We only check in the code. Because code is in KB. Code can be merged. But jar files are in, are in MBs. We cannot merge the jar files. Right? So we never check in the jar files. Now what happens? As a tester A, I was using 3.141. And rest other teams were also using 3.141 of Selenium. Now, all of a sudden, there was a new Selenium came into the market, the new version that is Selenium 4.0, with some new implementation of classes. Now, what I did, I implemented those classes in my project. I've removed 1.4.59 from my project, and, then, and I have added later Selenium 4 in my project. Where the new classes were there, I've written all those classes over here. But rest of the team is still following 3.141.59. And at the end of the day, I've checked in the code. Without mentioning that I've updated a new jar file. Although whenever we check in a code, we do add coding comments that these are the changes that we have done in the project. And this is the code that uh, we are checking it to the centralized repository. Let's say even I have mentioned it that I have updated Selenium 4.0. Now, whosoever take a fresh checkout of the code, because the very next day everyone has to take, let's say, a fresh checkout of the code. So code get merged, and at the end of the day, the next day when you comes in, you need to get the fresh code. So once everyone checks out the code, they'll start getting errors. Why? Because the new classes that were introduced in Selenium 4 is not accessible to them. They are still using the old Selenium jar file. But I'm not getting any error because I'm using the latest jar. So what other people will gonna do? They'll go to Selenium website and they're gonna download the latest Selenium 4. And they're gonna fix the errors that they're getting in their project. This is what they'll be doing it, right? Now it's not just question of one single jar. Maybe it happened that tester B updated JDBC to 9.2 version. This tester updated log4j to some other version. This tester may have added five more jar files. And at the end of the day, everyone has checked in the code. No one is going to check in the jar file because jar file cannot be checked in. So now what happens next day? When they start downloading the code, everyone will start getting some errors because the new jars are not there on their machines. So what they'll do, they'll waste their entire day in fixing their project, the error that they're getting in their project, right? They're gonna search, they're gonna Google around why this class is uh, missing. They're gonna search for the latest jar, they'll download it, and they're gonna fix the project. So this is a very hectic process. Right, but this is what happens. I mean, in case you're working in a big project where there are more than uh, one automation guy, right, working on a same project, then there has to be some process to automate this entire process. So you need some utility which should actually gonna manage these jar files. And these jar files are also called as dependencies. These jars, your project is dependent on these jars. So these jars are called as dependencies and you need a dependency management tool, which should actually manage these dependency automatically. And that tool is basically called as Maven. Right, Maven is a dependency management tool, plus it is a build tool. Now, what is a build tool? We're gonna look at it later on. First, let us understand what dependency management tool and how we're gonna fix this issue of managing the jar files. So for that, we need to download Maven and we need to configure it first. So Maven is 
completely open source, no license required, whatever things that we are discussing so far, there is no license required for all these things, right? All these are built up on open source itself. So simply go to Google and say, download Maven. And then go to this website. See, I'm not talking about any programming right now. So people who are not with programming background don't need to worry at all. So these are some important configuration that we are doing and you all should be doing it on your machine. So from here, you'll be downloading this zip archive. This is the zip file that you'll be downloading. Once you download it, it will gonna come like this. I've already downloaded it. I have stored it inside my D drive and softwares. So this is uh, the zip file you're gonna get. See, I'm using the latest one, 3.6.3. You are Maven is over here. This is Maven. This is Maven executable file. So nothing installable. You need to do the same configuration that we did for JDK. You need to set up Maven in your global environment variables. And how are you gonna do that? Just copy the root folder. There's a shortcut to go to environment variable. Type edit in your start, edit and you get this edit system environment variables. So this is already open, but you're gonna get this box, click on this. Under system variable, click on new, create a variable with the name as mvn underscore home and paste this value. That's it, click on okay. A variable created holding this folder value over here. Now same way, we need to go to path variable and say, percentage mvn underscore home percentage backslash bin because maven is inside bin folder over here so you need to give a path up till over here like the same way we did for java home you need to do it for maven home as well that's it that is the only configuration you need to do once you are done with this click on okay click on okay click on okay and maven is successfully configured now you want to make sure maven is configured or not go to cmd and type mvn hyphen hyphen version, press enter. If you get this message, it means Maven is successfully configured and you are good to use it, right? So this is how we configure Maven, very simple process. Now, once we are done with Maven global configuration, we'll go back to Eclipse and this time we are not going to add these dependencies jar files manually let's close this project create a new project same way creating a new java project right click say new this time i won't be selecting this java project i'll click on project if you open this go down you'll find an option of maven over here expanded select maven project Click on next, select create a simple project. Click on next, group ID. Group ID is something like your domain name. Like my domain is uh, waytoautomation.com. So I'm gonna give it in reverse order, com.waytoautomation or com.w2a. This is called as a group ID. Artifact ID is something your project name. Project name, let's say Selenium Testing. We have already given this name. So I'll say it's Selenium Testing Maven. Could be anything to the project name. Rest of the things are not required for the time. Click on finish, that's it. So you can see another Java project created, but this is created with some Maven architecture. If you look at your previous Java project, this was a simple Java project where you find one source folder and inside it you have created a class like this but if you open this project you're going to find a structure something like this right what is the difference in maven and java that is what i'm explaining right now 
you will be able to understand it in some time just be with me so you can see src the source folder it is actually coming four times they are not four source folder they are only one there, there's only one source folder if you go to the root location of this project see if i go over here this is where my project is if i open this from here you can see in the directory there is only one src folder and in the project structure if you see after src there is two main and two test so if i open this there is only one main and one test in main you have java resources in test you have java resources in main you have java resources in test you have java resources so this is nothing this is just a folder structure this is how things are managed in an actual project if you're working in a live project these are the things how the how the code how the project is managed into different different folders see it's it's, it's like when you want to store something on your pc you can directly store everything on c drive 1000 files you can directly keep it on c drive there won't be any issue but in case you want to search for a particular document then you'll be scrolling the entire c drive so that is not the managed way of doing it in order to make it manageable what you do you create folders like a folder for uh, movies for songs for personal documents official documents inside that as well you have subfolders month wise date wise so that you can if in case you want to go uh, and search for a particular document you directly go to that folder and search for it same thing happens in uh, any java project any not even java any programming project automation project where you have hundreds of classes you're going to create you can keep all the classes directly in this src folder as well in the default package but let's say you have 100 classes over here you want to search for a particular functionality you will end up searching the entire list so that is again not a managed way of doing it so in order to make it more manageable what we do is we create packages so this is a standard way you can see there are something called as main main is a folder folder is called as a package so everything that is related to development part business logic will be added inside this main package and anything that is related to testing automation testing unit testing that thing will come inside these test packages so whatever testing that we are going to do the selenium testing code we are going to write will not going to go inside main package it will go inside the test package and anything that is related to coding part the java file will going to come inside java package and any resource like excel file notepad file xml file right all these things will going to come inside resources so which is not java part will going to come inside resource so if we are working on selenium we're going to right click create a new class either create a new class or create a new package you can add one more folder as well right click add one more folder one more package name it as test cases and inside this folder see if you go back to this hierarchy you're going to see one folder is created where is our project i think i have uh, removed it but if you go to this location you're going to see in src test java one folder is created test cases so packages are nothing these are folder structure only right and in this test case package i'm going to create a new class call it as test browser finish and here i'm going to write some code so code will be the same code chrome driver driver equal to new chrome driver and then i'll say driver dot get and i'm gonna do http google.com like this 
but again i'm getting some errors let's do a mouse over i'm again not able to find the chrome driver class why because this is a separate project how come this project know what is chrome driver now we need to add the selenium jar in order to import this chrome driver class now there are two ways the one that we have followed earlier right click on your project go to build path add external archive and add this jar file manually but again this will going to give us the same challenge maybe next time the jar version changes we again need to update it and everyone in the team has to update it so instead of doing this what i'll going to do if you see this maven project you see something called as pom.xml file at the end this is the heart of your maven project if you open this you'll see this is your selenium project you have created a group id you have create uh, this is your own project that you have created you have given the project name as selenium testing maven project once you compile this project it will give you a jar file out of it with the version 0.0.1 this is your project that you have created now this project is dependent on the selenium project so you can do one thing create a tag over here name it as dependencies and now you want to add selenium dependency over here so how are you going to do it go back to the selenium website so selenium website selenium dot dev and go to this download where you have downloaded this jar file you downloaded this jar file from here right now if you go down okay they have changed the website structure so the maven information is also shown over here yeah this is the maven information you can see so click on this and see what we get see we got this dependency and you can see the group id group id is actually the domain name so prior to selenium.dev it was seleniumhq.org they are still using the same group id the project name is selenium java and the current version is 3.141.59 i'll just going to copy this dependency copy it go to my project and paste it over here and save it that's it that is the only thing i need to do if you go back to your project you'll get one maven dependency over here if you open it all the selenium jars are added to your project automatically now go back to your class mouse over see you get an option of import click on this the class is imported save it run it and see if the browser launches or not browser is not launching why because we are missing the executable file i'll come back to this executable file but before that i've used one selenium dependency over here right but but i have added lot of other jar files as well i have added log4j i have added uh, like poi apis how about those jar files again we need to go to their website we need to go to apache website to download log4j download uh, poi we need to go to mysql website download uh, mysql dependency the jar file right we need not to go to each and every website there's a centralized repository for all these dependency for all these jar files and that is called as mvn repository okay guys uh, are you able to hear me i believe there is no connection issue okay it's working now all right so here this is a centralized repository any java project you want to search even if you want to search for selenium just type selenium you need not to navigate to selenium website to download their jars you can directly download it from here selenium java see download the latest four download 3.14159 any previous version you can download let's say if i go over here i want to change this version 
in eclipse i am using 3.141.59 i don't want to use 3.141.59 i want to use uh, 3.13.0 3.13.0 i just need to change it over here just hit save and you're going to see within few seconds you can see it's being downloaded automatically it has started downloading it and now all this changes changes to 3.13 right let, let the download complete so all these changes to 3.13 similarly i want to get log 4j so i'll go over here say log 4j go over here instead of downloading this jar file you get dependency over here just need to copy this dependency go over here and paste it and save it and now you're going to see this log 4j added to your project right so okay the question is so i can change myself how about if others do not change see other there is no need to change it what happens at the end of the day when you are checking in the code you will check in, you will also check in this form.xml file so whenever they check out the code they'll get this form.xml and once they build the project automatically all the jars will going to come into their projects so whatever is there in form.xml automatically they'll be uh, all the jars will be downloaded to their project they need not to manually navigate to, uh, to each and every website to download the latest jars so this is what the beauty of maven is and not just this this is not only the scenario with the jar file it may happen that we took up a scenario right now chrome browser is 84 so we have downloaded 84 exe then it again changes to 85 then i again need to go to chrome website and download 85 exe so this is again a hectic process now we can automate this process as well and for doing this again this is done with the help of maven only there is one project called as web driver manager see automatic selenium web driver binaries management in runtime for java you just need to open this project copy the latest dependency go to your pom.xml file and paste it that's it so once you have pasted it it is going to download it and you'll see web driver manager dependency is added the jar file is added now this is for all the browsers yes now see when i run this project i was getting an error the error was it is missing the browser executable right so i need not to go to the website and download the browser executable now i'll simply gonna write web driver manager dot chrome driver dot setup that's it and it will do the magic if i run this now you can see chrome browser is launching and is navigating to google.com see if you want to do this for firefox simply change this to firefox driver change the class to firefox driver and change it to firefox driver does it always update to latest version see it it uh, downloads the version depending on your browser see launched firefox
right? If you have not set up Maven globally, then it will not gonna work. That is the pre-request. I'm gonna repeat all these steps in, in our next session as well, in the web driver session as well, right? Even for the people who are going to uh, join the Java sessions, after your Java sessions, we're gonna repeat these things. Don't worry about it. And uh, the best part is all these things are being recorded as well. I've already shared you the recording from our yesterday session. I'll be sharing you this recording as well so that you can uh, have all this set up on your machine. I'll upload the text file as well, whatever that I've written. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll share that as well. Right, but these configuration that we have done are very, very important to get started with Selenium. So you need to have at least these things configured. To come to the next session you should you should have all these things successfully configured up and running on your machine in any case if you may face any issues because uh, most of you might be configuring maven for the very first time so maven is a little tricky concept right so it may gonna error out in the beginning but don't worry about it in case you get stuck then directly reach out to me and i'll gonna help you in fixing that issue right but just give it a try with your own hand configure all these things and see if you are able to launch the browsers or not at least for the next class all the browsers should be up and running on your machine right so this is uh, about the selenium configuration now let's come to that uh, the demo thing that we have seen will work on maven project will always going to work on maven project only right will not be using simple java project because companies are following Maven project only. Even you look at the Selenium repository, the Selenium code, you are driver class, what code they have written. You can do a mouse over. Okay, uh, audio breaks. Just give me a moment. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay, I'm not sure why it is. Oh, okay, okay, guys, I was connected to. Uh, actually, I was connected to a uh, wrong network. I should have used this 5G network. So now, now you might might not gonna face any any challenge. So is it is it coming fine now? Okay, that's great. Thanks for confirming. So yeah, I was uh, telling that someone asked me to show me the implementation, the coding part. So when you add uh, your project as a Maven project, when you download these dependencies of Selenium, so if you mouse over onto this Firefox driver, press Control and do a mouse over, and then enter, you should be able to see the Firefox driver class code. This is the actual implementation. The developer who has created this Firefox driver class, if any one of you is interested to look into the coding part, to dive into this coding part, if you're good in Core Java, very strong in Core Java, you can explore this coding library as well. So this is where you can see the Firefox driver code. You mouse over onto this get, and you should be able to see this get method implementation. Right, so we'll be exploring a lot of stuff once we get started with WebDriver, but you have the entire coding part with you. Strike, our, uh, strike. you may have seen some uh, things showing with strike. Strike are the deprecated classes or functionality. This is deprecated. Strike means deprecated. Right, okay. So now uh, let's come back to our main discussion where we were discussing about that Selenium is for web-based only, and we can also integrate the data-based part and we can do the database testing as well. But not just this, I can automate mobile applications as well. If you know Selenium, if you know WebDriver, if you're good in WebDriver, APM is nothing, it's just a wrapper over your WebDriver API. I'll show you one example. 
on let me connect my real mobile device just give me a moment let me connect my mobile device just a moment Okay, let me show you the mobile device as well. So this is the app that I was talking about yesterday. You all can install this application in case you get stuck anywhere. Uh, you can ping me and share the screen by showing your ID and password. So I can take a remote of your machine for you. Right, let me show you my mobile device. Uh, one, seven, two, or two. All right. Okay, sorry about that. I missed to change the wallpaper. Uh, just a moment it got stuck just a moment guys Okay, so what I'll do is, uh, see, uh, this is what the APM code. See, what we did for when we were working on Selenium, we were using a class called as Firefox driver, right? In case you want to launch the Chrome browser, you change it to Chrome browser. Now, in case uh, you want to work on Android, so you just need to change it to Android driver. That is the only change that you need to do. Like I'll show you the code of APM. This is a similar code to APM. You just need to do new Android driver. And same code, driver.get, google.com, element, whatever that we have written, same code I've written over here as well. But what happens if I run this code, you're gonna see that now it will be executed on a real device. See, it is going to launch the Chrome browser on the real mobile device. And now it is going to navigate to Google. Okay, see, and then it will quit. So this is how you can execute it on your real mobile device as well not just the browser based you can in case you want to do something uh, you can automate whatsapp facebook any application that is there on your mobile phone even if you want to make a phone call so you can do it something like this i'll change these settings and comment out this code and uncomment this one So it's a very simple code. In case you know web driver, this is a web driver code only. And if I run this again, 
this time you're going to see that uh, it is going to launch the dialer let's wait see dialer is launched and now it's typing the numbers and then we're going to give a call right so this is how if i can automate my dialer i can automate any application on my mobile device right works on any android mobile even for ios as well for ios you need to change it to ios driver right so now you can see that if i know selenium i can automate web app desktop app even uh, no web app database app even the mobile applications and that to open source no license required for it so whatever that we have seen so far we'll be doing all this configuration in our live training as well right so at least uh, how to make a phone call how to navigate to google i'll going to show it to you with a practical implementation you should be able to do it easily and rest you'll be getting access to the complete apm course so each and everything automating all the mobile elements everything on ios android mobile automation frameworks all these things will be covered in that yes that is the detailed course on apm but see the only challenging part in apm is the configuration selenium configuration is just a 10 mb jar file but if you configure apm it will going to take at least 5 gb of your disk so that's a huge configuration so most of the people get stuck with the configuration part only and rest coding is the web driver only right so we're going to deal with the complete configuration and then uh, like i'll going to show you how to execute it on real device and then you can follow that uh, video library that i'll going to give you access on that's a complete apm course so in case you get stuck anywhere then i'll help you don't worry about it right and about the desktop part so if you have uh, gone to this apm official documentation that is apmpro.com so this is the apm official documentation you're going to find it over here and if you uh, search for one of the article if you go down so apm guys have actually introduced something you can see testing window desktop application with apm so they have introduced the library that is called as win app driver so this is uh, win app driver uh, you're going to see that name this is win app driver and this is just an implementation of selenium only if you use this library you can launch calculator you can launch notepad on your desktop and you can perform testing on it and if you look at the coding part coding is the same if you go down this is opening on window pc and some microsoft application and then same driver dot find element same code is there again an, another open source api so it means if you know selenium you can automate desktop applications as well so web based is done desktop is done mobile is done database is done the last part that is left is the api so for api mostly people uh, they use is uh, postman to perform manual testing postman is just a manual testing tool now the companies who are actually working on hardcore automation they have very good frameworks created right where they uh, have selenium part integrated into the same project database integrated into the same project now when you are working on their project they want you to automate the apis as well and for apis you will not be investing into a different tool they want in the same project you should automate the api you should not be manually testing the apis you should automate it so for automation of api again you need to add one single jar file and that is what is rest assured jar file like we have added poi we have added log4j if you add this rest assured jar file it's an open source jar file you get some classes through which you can hit the apis the web services all the get post put if you have some background around api testing you should be able to handle it in the same project 
right? So that is what the power of Selenium. So Selenium, it's like your base for automation. If you know Selenium, down the line, two, three years, you will be practically using all these things in your project. Right? This is because Selenium is not a tool. There is no boundary to Selenium. Anything feasible in Java can be achieved, can be achieved using Selenium. Right. So API testing is actually a separate course. We do have live sessions on API as well. But API, I want you to focus it once you are already through with the UI part. Because UI is very, very simple. Once your UI concepts are over, then you should go for the API part. You can go for the recordings as well. We have the whole recordings available as well. Or you can join the live session if you want. Again, after these three months, there is another 2.5 months for API automation. But that, because that is again a huge course. And these days, I mean, companies who have their UI, they have their mobile applications, they have APIs. Almost every website, uh, they communicate around APIs. So whichever website you talk about, Amazon, Flipkart, Make My Trip, Expedia, Facebook, Google, every website there communicates to each other their functionality through this API itself. Although API, it's a very huge topic. We cannot discuss it uh, right now in just few minutes. I'm gonna give you some uh, basic uh, recording on uh, API testing as well. If you go through that, you should be, uh, you should gonna come to know what exactly API is, what is the scope of API testing, what are REST APIs, what are this, uh, std methods like get post post right so that is again very important thing but yes we are getting started with automation so the very first step is selenium to automate the ui part and once you're comfortable in it once you're good in java then rest assured is nothing within a week you should be able to understand the rest assured api right so uh, Malika, I'm gonna give you some documentation on it. You can try going through it. There are some demo recording videos from our previous batches, the initial few sessions. I've opened it uh, to free access. So in case you go through it, you should have a fair amount of understanding what API is, how API communicates, what is rest assured, how uh, you can perform a basic test. So these other things are already there. Anything on QTP, no. <laughs> <laughs> I majorly focus on open source technology. QTP, the demand is very, very less uh, these days in the market. Majorly companies are moving towards Selenium. For desktop apps, there are open source uh, tools as well available, like this uh, uh, WinApp driver is there. There are other Java APIs as well. Although those are not as powerful as we have QTP for desktop applications, but even if you talk about scope of desktop, it's very less because hardly you will find desktop applications these days. Most of the things are on cloud, on web. So that is uh, the another reason why Selenium is very popular. Right? All right, so that's uh, all guys uh, for our today's session. Uh, from the next session, uh, most of the people who joined as a demo session uh, or who are recently enrolled will be joining uh, with uh, the Java instructor. So he'll be uh, taking you to uh, the entire Java basic core Java course. And once you are done with uh, the core Java course, then you'll be joining uh, with me again for the Selenium part. And then I'll be covering all the web driver, the frameworks, test engine, whatever that we have listed down over here. So all these topics we are going to cover, except the core Java part in the Selenium live sessions. Right, so uh, what is the deadline for enrollment? You can enroll uh, yourself any point of time uh, you want uh, before uh, next Thursday, so that uh, we can include you in the WhatsApp group and we'll send you access to all the courses and you can get started. Right, for the people who are already done with core Java part, we'll be continuing in the same batch, right? We're gonna start with uh, this Maven process again in the next session, and then we'll continue with hitting our websites.
right? Core Java will gonna take at least uh, one and a half months or so, around seven weeks. Yeah, Preeti, I'll gonna share this uh, notepad stuff as well, right? I'll be uploading this recording soon and uh, I'll gonna share it with you. Uh, people who want to skip the core Java part will still gonna get access to the entire core Java uh, recordings as well. So there are a couple of people who are following the core Java recordings during the weekdays and attending the Selenium sessions uh, over the weekends. In case you want to do it in that way, you can do it in that way as well. But I really want, uh, you should not rush in it because uh, like in case uh, you are not in rush for finding jobs, then at least Selenium will gonna take three months time uh, I mean, it's not like you can be expert in Selenium in one month because there are so many things to cover, right? And things will actually take time. Even you need to take out time for practice as well. So I don't want that you should rush. But yes, if someone is in search of job, uh, like then you can do it in this way. You can cover the core Java programming through the video recordings during the weekdays and attend the Selenium live sessions during the week. So that's your choice. Uh, yes, Priya, uh, like Java instructor will gonna go in that way only. You, you're gonna have very good time in Core Java. Rest assured about it. People who have already attended uh, Core Java training can also give you the feedback on the same. So don't worry about it. So timings of the classes will gonna remain the same. So 8.30 till 10.30 in uh, evening IST. So you can convert uh, in your zone as well. Right? Okay, so thanks a lot guys. Thanks a lot for your time and uh, for the patience. And uh, I'll expect to see you all in the next session. Right. So, uh, gender core Java timings will remain the same. You'll be receiving the WhatsApp group and will be sending out the meeting invites in the group itself. So I'll be creating the group for the new batch very soon. Most probably by tomorrow. I'll going to send these details. Right. So that's all. I hope you have enjoyed these sessions. Sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm going to end the session now. I'll be sharing the recording and other details soon. Thank you guys.